These are our two phases of SEO that we need to go ahead and implement in order to get the results of showing up on page one of Google. All right, guys, welcome back to another video today. So today we are continuing on our affiliate marketing little mini series that I put together for you. Now, if you missed any videos in this series, you should go watch them. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to a playlist that I've been putting together for this. And you'll wanna go watch that because we cover everything from keyword selection to building the website to competitive analysis all of that stuff, check it out after this video though. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to rank your affiliate marketing website in Google so that you can actually get traffic coming to it. Now, before we get into that, if you're excited for it, smash a like on this video for me. Also, if you're new here and you're not subscribed, drop below, tick the subscribe button and the bell notification icon because then I will update you every time I post a new video. So if I add more videos to this series, you're gonna get notified of it so you don't wanna miss out. So affiliate marketing, if you're not aware, is just the process of recommending a product to someone and you get paid a cut of whatever they buy. So let's pretend they buy this camera lens here for $500. On Amazon, you're gonna get about 4% of that to 10% of that. If you pick a product that is like digital on ClickBank or another affiliate marketing network, if it was a $50 product, you would get $25 commission because usually at minimum, you're gonna get paid 50% commission on a product like that. But it, all, it varies, it goes all the way up to like 75%. So in one of our last videos, we built out the website, or we started to, we didn't fully build it out, but we started to build it out, putting pages together. And in this video, I thought it would be helpful if I showed you how to actually rank that and get traffic coming to it so that you can get cashing in and making money with affiliate marketing because it's a great business model. I really like it. All right, so we're gonna hop on the computer here and I'm gonna break this entire strategy down. All right, so when it comes to search engine optimization, which is the process that we're going to use to actually get our website ranking in Google or SEO, there's a couple of different factors that come into play when you're talking about optimization. The first factor is on page, so I'll just put on. The second factor is off page. Off page usually refers to things like backlinks. Now backlinks are a concept that once you understand it, it's pretty simple. But if you don't understand it and you're new to that concept, it could be a little bit confusing at first. So I'm gonna do my best to break it down in the simplest way possible. Let's pretend that you own a tree trimming company and CNN writes an article on you or on tree trimming and at the end of their article, they say, hey, check out Paul's tree trimming website if you need tree trimming. So what they do is their article, this link on their article takes the person to your tree trimming website. We'll just put you or me. <laughs> that would be considered from Google a backlink from CNN. Now the way Google judges backlinks is they judge them on quantity, but also quality. So you can't just go out there and get like 100 backlinks and then outrank your competitor who has 90 backlinks. They would have to be 90 of the same quality or like higher quality because you can't just go get a bunch of like low quality backlinks and then outrank them. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to find exactly what backlinks your competitors are using so that you can basically take them and use them for yourself. And that way you can basically emulate what they're doing. So that's the backlink side of things. The on-page side of things is basically what we do on the website. This would be like uh, putting keywords in your articles or creating uh, blog posts or content, basically content marketing here. That would be considered on-page. So we call them on-page because it's actually on the website. These are our two phases of SEO that we need to go ahead and implement in order to get the results of showing up on page one of Google. So now that you know the overall strategy and how we're gonna get there, let's actually dive into a little bit deeper detail when it comes to the on-page stuff. Let me open up a new board here. Okay, so when it comes to our on-page strategy, it's going to be determined on keywords and pages or blog posts. I don't care whether you create pages for your content or blog posts for your content, it doesn't matter. So like we created a page here when we created this new piece of content earlier and we only half finished it, but this could just as well been a blog post as well. But the point is, is that 
each keyword you pick out, as long as it's not super related to your last keyword, should be on its own blog post or page. Now, there are some exceptions, like if I were to say best Omega Juicer Review 2019, that would be fine to put on that keyword in this page as well, because that would be a related keyword. So it's okay if we put in related keywords in here, but if this was like Breville Juicer Review, we would want that on a separate page. So we wanna create separate pages and separate blog posts, either way you wanna do it for each different thing. On each page or each blog post, we wanna have an article written that has approximately 300 to 500 words. Now, in the case of our basketball arcade game thing that we researched earlier, if we take a look at like one of these websites who we'd be competing against, I would actually go in here and I would assess how much content they have. And I can see they have quite a lot. In fact, they have a lot more than 300 to 500 words. So in order to compete with this, ideally I would want to emulate this. Like let's just say they had 1500 words. If that's what my competitors have, that's what I wanna have on my blog post for that particular keyword. So this is what SEO comes down to. It's emulating what your competitors are doing. Let's talk plugins. WordPress gives us some plugins to help out with on-page SEO. And one of my favorite plugins, if I come under plugins and go to add new, is a plugin called Yoast SEO. There's another one called All-in-One SEO as well, which I've used as well. But we'll just use Yoast in this one. We'll go ahead and install this right now. And Yoast basically makes it easy if you've never optimized a website before to basically go and get started. What it does is if I go to one of my pages or blog posts, again, doesn't matter, and I hit edit, what we're gonna see if we scroll to the bottom of the, of the page here is we now have the ability to edit what's called our meta description. And you can go and you can put your target key phrase in there. So let's just say it's Omega Juicer Review. We could put it in there. And Yoast will actually go back and they will start analyzing our content throughout our page. Now this content was created in Elementor, but it will go in there and it'll, it'll see how many times we put the focus key phrase in there. You're gonna wanna bold your focus key phrase. You're gonna wanna italicize it one time. You're gonna wanna put an image on your website and put your um, keyword inside of the image title in the alt. It's called like an alt text. You'll see when you upload an image to WordPress that it allows you to do this. Let me just open up a different page here just to show you an example so we don't lose our spot here. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if I were to come in here and uh, just choose an image here and I hit upload, let me find something I can upload here. Okay, so if I go and I click on this, and I hit edit image, I think it put it right over here. Okay, I clicked edit as HTML here and inside of that, you can see where it says alt equals. This is where I would put my keyword. So Omega Juicer Review. They also let you do it over here as well. You can see how it popped up. But yeah, you wanna do that as well. So along with bolding, italicizing your keywords somewhere throughout the article, add in an alt text too as well to it. Okay, so back to uh, the Yoast SEO plugin. What you wanna do is you wanna come in here and you wanna start emulating or modeling all of your SEO metadata. This is what shows up in Google. When someone sees your website in Google, let's go back as an example, it's this text right here. This is the title, this is the description of the meta. You wanna fix all of that so that it looks good. So I would want to, I've already got Omega Juicer Review in here, if I wanna take out the site title, I can do that. And maybe for the separator, I put best review for 2019 or something like that. And let's put Omega Juicer. You know, something like that. That way my keyword is in there, it's relevant, and I can do the same thing down here. I can say, are you thinking about getting a juicer, check out our review on the 2019 Omega juicer. And I know it's not 2019, but uh, I think one of the keywords I researched was 2019. So that's why I'm using it there. Anyways, you could see there, 
it filled it all in. Um, the only other thing we would want to do is we'd want to change the slug to, again, be our keyword too. Omega Juicer Review. So when someone visits our website, instead of it going to, you know, pauljames.com forward slash, and it would just be some random numbers after it, it's gonna actually say our keyword Omega Juicer Review. Okay, so that is how you wanna do your on-page SEO. It's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it other than that, but I do wanna to talk to you as well about the off-page because that is where a lot of confusion come in comes into play for people. So I wanna to explain to you how we're going to handle that. And what I usually like to do is I like to open up a spreadsheet just like this, and I like to grab my top competitor. So let's just say this recroompick.com, and I'm gonna grab their URL, and I'm gonna actually just grab the .com part of it because I wanna find all of their backlinks that I possibly can. Not backlinks that are just going to this page, but I wanna find all of them. The more backlinks, the better, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna type this in a search phrase, quotation mark, and put the .com part of it in quotation marks. No www dot, no HTTP, just this part, just like that. So you're gonna put that in quotation marks. And what this is telling Google is you wanna find all sites that are linking to recroompick.com. But we wanna have an exception in here, and the exception is is that we don't wanna see sites that are linking to them if it's their own website linking to it. Like, let's say they have another page on their website and they link to it. I don't wanna know that. I just wanna know other sites. So I'm gonna say minus in URL recroompick.com. That's gonna tell Google I wanna see all pages that point to recroompick.com, but I don't want you to show any pages on my own website, basically. So there it is. You're gonna do this for your competitor, your top ranking competitor. You could do it for your top three ranking competitors and really gather a good list. And this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna hit search. You're gonna see how many results they have, and you're gonna see exactly what backlinks they have. So we know they have a Pinterest profile. I would go ahead, I would mark that down. We can go and create a Pinterest profile fairly easily. So there it is. Okay, so we can see here is their URL, recroompick.com. So that is considered a backlink, their Pinterest profile. So I'm gonna copy the URL for that. And there it is. And I would just go down the list. I would keep going. So they have a Crunchbase profile. So I would just note that down, crunchbase.com. Boom, another backlink. Air Hockey World, they're featured on a forum. This looks like it's a forum. So you could go into Air Hockey World and post a forum post linking back to your website. So I'm gonna do that, airhockeyworld.com. And I would just keep going, they have a Twitter profile. Twitter.com. This is how you get backlinks, guys. It's not, it's not complicated, it's not rocket science. But when you're first starting off, until someone explains it to you like this, it can seem very, very confusing. But this is literally the process you go through if you wanna rank a website. You do the on-page stuff, then you come and you do the off-page, which is just reverse engineering your competitors and going and creating your own version of these profiles and putting your website on it. So that is basically the process if you enjoyed this video smash a like on it for me and if you thought this was interesting and you'd like to get updated of future videos be sure to drop below right now and subscribe take the bell notification icon and then i'll update you every time i post a new video but anyways guys we're gonna wrap that up here if you're not following me on instagram my handle is at hello paul james i post videos there almost daily they're different videos from here on youtube so you're not going to want to miss those so go follow me there but anyways until next time i will see you in another video don't forget to check out the playlist in the description to watch the rest of these affiliate marketing series. Until next time, I am Paul James. Peace out.